Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to take on a, um, a reel that Steven sent in. It's a uh, Shimano. It's a Tyranos uh, 10. It's a smaller frame one. Very much similar to uh, some of the other gray framed reels that they have out there like the Tourium and that. This one's got a 6.0 to 1 gear ratio. And Steven was telling me he had a very difficult time when cranking this reel in. It just was hard to turn in that. And um, I believe the primary cause of that was braid slip. And I've gone ahead and I pulled all the line off of this. I backed it with monofilament and I put it back on. I'll show you uh, what that cause was uh, in um, a short video that follows. And then we'll come back. We'll take this apart. We'll fully disassemble it. We'll show you how to tune this reel up, since I told Stephen I would do that as well. And uh, if you have one of these, you'll know how to do it. And if you have a reel that's not backed with monofilament, you'll understand what the consequences are of that. So uh, stay tuned. Here's a brief overview of what happens in braid slip. But that line isn't moving. This is the typical cause of braid slip. That uh, band on the braid is too uh, slick. It won't grab the spool, and as a result, when you go to uh, reel in your line, it just bunches after a while. So that needs to be corrected by you know, backing that with monofilament, and that's what we'll do. Thank you. Okay, so we're back, and uh, let's take this reel apart then. Let's uh, see if we can help him solve his issue, and uh, we'll... Uh, get going by removing the external parts. While we do that, I want to do what I normally do at this time, kind of show you some of the safety precautions. I do take a, a glove and wear that on my non-working hand. I wish I could wear it on all of my hands, both of them. <laughs> but uh, I just have trouble when I'm grabbing uh, tools uh, with the, the working hand as I'm right-handed. So this keeps Things like that, the grease and stuff off of the, off of my hand. Also use a parts tray where I deposit all the pieces and parts. And uh, in this case, this I don't have the tool for this. So what I do is I use a channel lock pliers. Now be careful if you're going to do this. You don't want to mess up the, uh, the handle screw. Uh, you just need to be very careful. And channel lock pliers works that way because you can just kind of grab the two tabs, get it started, and then you can generally work the rest of it out by hand, as I'm doing here. You don't want to scratch this. You don't want to bugger that up. You have to be very careful if you don't have the wrench. Otherwise, this, these channels, these little grooves where that set screw sits, uh, they're going to get uh, uh, beat up, and you're not going to be able to get that set screw in there, and then you're going to lose the effectiveness on the hand. So just break it, just to break the screw, and then hand, hand work it out and uh, go from there. All right, so with that off, the handle comes off. Good time to tell you, if you don't know the reel, and I haven't played around with this one in a while, it's a lever drag reel, go ahead out to the site. This, in this case, this one came right from Shimano, and go get the schematic for it. It'll give you the burst diagram of the fishing reel, and it'll tell you all of the parts listed. And if you need a replacement part, in this case, you could actually go and order that from uh, from Shimano. So. Shimano covers a lot of their late model reels with parts, and if you run out of uh, uh, parts there due to age, sometimes you can find them on ereplacementparts.com, which is their authorized parts distributor. So get a schematic and also take pictures along the way. That's what I'm doing right now with the video, but you don't have to take videos. Uh, what you can do is you can go ahead and take still pictures with your your cell phone or your digital camera or whatever you choose and uh, those still pictures will uh, give you critical points along the way in terms of when you went about disassembling the reel and uh, if you get stuck on the reassembly you can go back and look at those pictures for, for part orientation and the like. When I remove a side plate I like to move the lever arm over into the free spool position that kind of tells me internally the mechanics of it and we can remove the preset adjuster. There's a spring under there. Then there's a little adjuster here and you can see the two points on it. And this tells you when you're in free spool, you're lined up across. 
you can see the two uh, little indentations in this arm and those two indentations are going to match up with these triangular uh, studs on this one and that's generally the best way to put this back and ensure that you lock in on free spool right away uh, after you rebuild a reel. All right, I'm not quite sure if I can get that out at this point. I can't. We're going to have to take that uh, trim ring off, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use a Phillips head screwdriver. Now notice that on this trim ring, there's two pieces that have collars on them, and there's one that's a um, flathead screw, the one in the middle. And again, just from an orientation standpoint or taking pictures along the way, it's, uh, it's good to, to just make those mental notes when you go to reinstall. All right, this is the last one for that pre-spool then. You can take that trim ring out. Now you can remove that preset arm. And uh, we've just got the two screws here, two screws on the back. And uh, the trim ring came off. I was wondering if I was going to see screws, but uh, I didn't. And that goes like that. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and take the rest of this uh, this spool off. I'm not sure. We may have a uh, a screw coming in from underneath here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look right now on that uh, schematic, that burst diagram, and we do. So we have to take this side off in order to complete the gear side disassembly. What I like to do when I take side plates off like this is I like to leave this the screws on my workbench for a moment here. I want to make sure that all of those screws are the same size and the same threads and the same th thickness. And Shimano is one of those manufacturers that for whatever reason tends to, to use different pieces and parts on those side plates. So you need to be aware of that if you try to put a uh, screw in that doesn't belong in a particular position. Uh, it could affect the operation of the reel. These four are the same. I'm going to remove the side plate. I put those screws right into the side plate. That's a trim ring. And the side plate should come right off behind that. Just like that. And actually I'm just going to, there's better cavity in that, that other one, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that there. I'm also noticing I got a little bit of like salt that's accumulated on those two ends of the screw, so let's go ahead and put that in, put this in, put that into my tray, and we'll know. Now I can remove this spool. And typical of spools that are loaded up pretty tight with line, sometimes they're harder to get out. this get this line out of there get the spool out of there we have to work on that too and I'm looking I believe I see two screws in here I'm not sure if that matters in the case itself so let's just go ahead and remove the others it may be that I have screws up here and remove the back back button on this and I need a small screwdriver for that. And I'll just grab a, a micro screwdriver. Again I'm laying them on my, my table because I want to make sure that we're okay with these in terms of sizes. Right now the four of these appear to be the same. There we go. I knew they had to be hiding somewhere. We have four more screws up top here. That answers that question, doesn't it? This is just a trim plate that was being held on there. So let's go ahead and uh, pull those other four out. And this is this really is a an example of how to take pictures along the way. These are very loose. That's unusual. 
two of those haven't been uh, tightened down. Three of them haven't been tightened down. That may be, I, I don't know if Stephen's fishing with these on a boat, but this is a good example of where a boat's vibration could help shake these free, especially in a graphite frame. All four of these screws were loose, which is kind of interesting. All right, now we should be able to simply lift up the whole configuration here. And you'll see on the back of this that I got yet two more screws. So uh, Shimano certainly didn't have a problem with acquiring screws for all of this. Uh, but I have two more holding this side plate on here. And then I think we can pretty much get down to servicing this reel. All right, these are the trim ring screws. So I'm going to put them in the trim ring. These four we know about. I'm going to put them up on the top of my workbench here. I'm going to just give them a little spray just in case they've picked up some uh, debris. And now i got two more screws here to set this last part of the trim ring off. And those are a different size. And again, I want to keep these sort of on my table because as I go to, re to lube and, and adjust the rest of this, then I want to just make sure that I can come back in and uh, reassemble quickly without uh, diving into that parts tray there. This should simply push through now, through and out. That was on the outside trim ring here. That goes on the top of this. Might as well leave that there. And as you can see, there's not much going on in here. We have a series of dogs and we have a bearing. So I'm just going to flush that bearing with some penetrating oil and then we'll lube it back up with some regular fishing meal oil. Just want to clean it off. That bearing is spinning very nicely. I'm just going to grab a uh, pick. Seems to be just a little bit of dirt. It's just old grease that's uh, riding on there. But the bearing's in fine shape. I'm going to use Relex. It's a uh, synthetic fishing wheel oil. It's a new container. You have to just kind of clip the top off as an applicator. All right, I'll just load that up. I want to clean the residual off the main gear track. I'm going to just use a paper towel for that. Looks like my pieces and parts are falling all over the place, but what that really is is that's just the, the uh, Teflon ring on the front end for the adjuster. Okay, so it's time to reinstall the main gear, and the first thing you're going to notice is you have a double dog system here. And if you just tried to put the main gear in while you're covering that, and there's no way you're going to be able to set those dogs properly. So what you need to do is you need to remove the main gear from the shaft so that you can have the stud back here to set the, the dogs. So I've already started this. You need an 11 millimeter socket or a wrench. Be careful if this thing gets buggered up. You've got to go buy both the main gear and the shaft, or at least the nut. And the other thing you need to note is that this is a reverse threaded screw. You notice I'm turning clockwise to remove the screw. Oops, pretty tight. So don't go putting a lot of tension on trying to take it off in a traditional manner. It's not going to work. So you remove it in a clockwise direction. You pull the main gear off. We have the lube and uh, the anti-reverse, so now we can go set that. So there's a couple of things you want to do with this. The first is uh, clean off any excess that might be on there in terms of grease. That probably just came through the, the front end of this. Also clean off the surface to the back of this. You'll notice there's two pins here that uh, set. One is on the, you can see they're removable. One is on here for now, and the other one is in the main gear. We can uh, put both of those on this one. And then we can grease the shaft. 
And now you want to just take this assembly. You might have to do it until that top piece might fall off. But insert the assembly in. And now you can see that your, your dogs are lying behind the assembly. And that's probably the biggest challenge you would have if you were trying to do this thing blind. You just can't seat those things. So this one pulls down. And this one pulls up. I'm just using a pick to do that right now. And now your assembly is set. So that's, uh, that's how you set the dogs. If you were wondering, I can't see through this thing. Well, that's probably a good cause for that. All right, so now we take our main gear. I want to get lube onto the teeth. All these, this reel in particular has an awful lot of screws to it, but that uh, each one of these reels seems to have a little bit of a secret that you have to unlock. And I guess the best way for me to unlock this has always been, it has to be a matter of mass production and uh, nobody could be trying to install one of these blind with picks and pins and things that would just not be an efficient way to manufacture. So just kind of use your head a little bit and, and figure out what's going on there and that'll help you uh, in the long term. All right, so now you just want to align the two holes on the main gear over those pins. Remember this came out in a clockwise fashion so it's going to go in in a counterclockwise fashion. Just like that. If you like with this you have your, your main gears out now. Put the handle on the back of it when you go to tighten. That way you won't uh, run into trouble. And then again, this is a reverse thread. Let's see how much of it you can do with your hand. And I apologize if I'm off camera or all you're seeing is my hand, but not a lot of excitement going on in turning a uh, a nut down here. And you'll feel the tension once you uh, you feel your hand moving when you're getting tight. Don't over tighten it. Don't risk snapping the, the, the bolt. But make sure it's nice and tight. There you go. And then you can give it a turn. Make sure that it's operating properly. And we can go on to install the, the side plate then. First up then is the side plate that connects those. We have those two screws out to the side. So we have that little trim package here. Well protected, I guess we can say that. There's a lot of screws in this reel. That's why it helps to take the pictures along the way. And uh, just from time to time, just check where you are with that. Those are the two top. Not quite in with that one. There we go. And then we have the four screws that go onto this in the trim ring. And I like to put that in right away. I don't want those dogs or that main gear jumping out at me. So I just want to uh, cover this up as quickly as we can. And the more you can install on the fly and the less you have laying around your bench, the better you're going to be for it. Okay, and then you want the two that have the, the long screws here, the two studs. And I believe it's this side, side with the side plate screws. If you remember then we have the four of these that we had taken out. Let's get those back in. Make sure these are tighter this time. I don't know what was causing that to, to be loose. They were certainly uh, shaken free. I 
And what we'll wind up doing here is we'll wind up taking all of the pieces that I had exposed in order to service that main gear and we'll get them all back on the reel so we, we don't have to trip over them or potentially knock them around. And then we have our trim ring here. The trim ring, we only had the two small screws below. And then the top of that trim ring is going to be held on by the swing arm for the lever drag. All right, there's only two, two more pieces lying on my table at the moment. I think that's a good thing. I don't bother to put them into the parts tray because I know that I'm going to act quickly on those and do exactly what I've just done here. So there we go. All right, so those are the trim rings. The little plastic washer rides there and this washer rides on here. Before you go too much further, give that a nice turn. Make sure that it's working properly. You don't want to go to the trouble of inserting all of the pieces and parts on here and then find out that uh, you got stuck and uh, this gear wasn't moving properly or whatever. So, all right, so let's stop for a moment, just kind of redo what we did. Uh, so we took the entire assembly off this side. We cleaned the, the main gear, we lubed the shaft, we greased the, the teeth, we oiled the bearing in the back, and uh, that's your service of that side of the case. All right, so we have a, a sliding gear here. That gear belongs uh, as the transition gear on the lever drag. Uh, we want to do the same thing here we've done with the others. I'm going to use a, a, a soft brush here just to clean the grease out of that. If that's getting in the way, I apologize. Just wiping off the excess grease. All right, and we uh, that, that gear is going to go into the bearing in the back here. I generally find that as a rule, if you loop that up and put that in there now, it's easier to seat than it is uh, when you try to install from the opposite direction. So let's just see if we can't put that in right now. I guess the short answer is it's not easy this way either. But what, you, what this helps you avoid doing is struggling to get the teeth to match the main gear like that when you're trying to install the rest of it. All right, so that's done. This will be our drag assembly then. We have a whole bunch of small screws here. So I'm just going to switch over to a micro screwdriver for that. tip. Helps to have a variety of tools on the bench. Sometimes these are uh, threaded into the side case assembly. Sometimes they're just held on like this. Underneath this we would expect to find a bearing and some springs. That's going to help your, your lever drag. And again I'm just kind of laying them on the table. I don't expect these screws to be any different. I expect all six of these or whatever they final number is to all be the same. And I have a couple of different sets of micro screwdrivers, but I like the uh, this one. It gives you a little bit more room to, uh, to work with. A little bit more leverage. Alright, one more should do it. There we go. So now if you had any question what was going to be coming out of this now, you can look at your assembly and see, okay, I've taken the springs off, then I've got my pressure plate, I have my drag washer, I have two bearings and a spring in the center core of that, and then I have a bearing and a, a couple of tension washers on the back end of this. So let's work on this side first. Those are those six little screws, I'm going to keep those together. So once we remove those screws, we can simply pull this off. This is your pressure plate on the back. It's important to note, you can, you can remove this, there's nothing in this assembly. Uh, there's just a, another collar behind it held in by the three screws. And there's a bearing in here. You want to make sure that this is clean, not pitted, because that's going to be the surface that's interacting with your, your drag washer. 
and you want to make sure you oil that bearing. And then there's the drag washer. This one's in good condition. You don't need to uh, use drag grease on these. These are kind of a stationary fabric to them. I do uh, like real X in particular for the nozzles so that I can just go in there and oil the bearing behind that. And uh, simple enough for this side of the, the service. You always want to check that. If that drag washer was worn, then you certainly would want to replace that. But uh, right now that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and put that pressure plate back on. I'm going to grab the piece. And as I said, it's better to, to kind of work with this without the uh, in steps as opposed to just kind of taking the whole reel apart and then kind of wondering where you are. All right, and then I'm just going to line these up and we'll go ahead and put those screws back in. So we've oiled the two bearings on that side. We've checked the drag washer. The drag washer is in good condition, no action necessary. And we'll just go ahead and pull the other side because there's a bearing and some tension washers over there that we want to make sure that they get their uh, lubrication as well. And then we'll go ahead and put it all back together. We'll give it a spin. And uh, I don't anticipate any issues, but for those of you that have this, it's worth taking the time to uh, do these steps. Um, you want to keep these things oiled and lubed. These reels are typically under a lot of stress. They're built for big fish. In this case, we've got some braid on there. I'm pretty sure without much issue that these things can hand, handle 30, 40, 50 pound fish. But uh, you don't want it breaking at the wrong moment. You don't want something seizing. Uh, you don't want to uh, risk losing the fish of a lifetime because you didn't take the time to have the reel serviced. I uh, don't know the age of this braid. As I mentioned, we had some serious braid slippage on this to begin with. And uh, I was being told it was hard to crank. Well, we saw when we took the uh, main gear out that that was dry. Uh, the bearings seem to be operating okay. So a little bit of uh, grease on both of the gears should uh, solve the uh, a little bit of the hard to crank. But I truly believe that the hard to crank became the issue with the, um, the braid slip. All right, this pin comes out. That's a pin that seats into the back of the assembly here. You can see where that T is. That's going to hold the, the lever dry rod in place. I'm going to take that out because you won't be able to get the back end of this assembly off with that pin in place. There's two screws that hold this on. And this is just a series of tension washers for the, uh, the lever drag. And it's got a, uh, a bearing in this side of the spool as well. Let's get the second one out. And then we should be able to pull this whole thing right out now. This is what I was referring to. You have the tension washers, you have a C-clip. There's no reason to pull this at this point. And you have the shaft, which we just had the bearings on the other side. You can uh, go ahead and put some lubrication onto the shaft. Now, of course, if the bearing was bad or anything, you would certainly want to go back in and pull all of this off. These tension washers here help with the sensitivity of the leather drag. And then we got a big old bearing like we had on the other side. We're going to coil that. Nice uh, bit of love and attention there. Just going to spin it, make sure it works its way in, and simply right back in again. And we did the other side already. So now all we have to do grab your back end plate, we install those screws. And those of you that watch with my uh, me and little pieces and parts, you probably know it's time to go get a cup of coffee and come back. Try with the other screwdriver. There we go. One more. Then we should be able to put this whole thing together and uh, see improved performance in it. 
So nice reel. Quality pieces and parts throughout. That's never a question with the Shimano products. Okay, and we have our little T-bar here. Now to go to reinstall, it has to be split in half. That's the only way it's going to uh, get on there. And put the spool in first. This is what I don't like about coming pre-spooled with line. When you go through the case, typically that line gets caught. Now we have to mesh the one gear in there with the, the tracks. And there's sort of don't like about having braid and stuff on when you're trying to work the reel. It almost always gets caught going through. I guess you could tape it on or something. Generally you work it through, but it's just something I don't like to do. Alright, now we've got our setup here. We have the four screws that go underneath after we place this in. So the first thing we need to do is we need to mesh the T with the T bar and then we can align that for the uh, top and bottom of the reel. It's going to sit this way so see how close we can get with that. And I'm doing this visually from the side and then we have the studs sit in the case now we have our case that goes on the top. Side plate cover, trim ring, beauty ring, whatever you want to call it. And other than having that uh, completely upside down, uh, we did okay. So we need to rotate this 180 degrees. We seat it. We have the, uh, the trim ring, so that it goes the right way. You can read what you have now. And then we can reinstall the exterior screws. Go side to side. Don't go in a circle when you go to reinstall your case screws. It just uh, keeps the tension equally on that. Just kind of moments away from seeing how we did in terms of turning the reel up. Again, I truly believe the culprit in this one was the braid slip. And I would encourage any of you that have these, any kind of reel that you're using braid on, regardless of whether the manufacturer tells you it's braid ready uh, and they have a little elastic band or something, I would encourage you to make certain that you go ahead and do it. Uh, the right way back it up. All right, we had this little trim ring. Seems to be a little bit of grease on that. These hold your two positions. This is your fast. This is your free spool. This is your second uh, second strike. Next up thing is our, our trim ring for the adjuster handle. Remember, we set this over to the. Got a couple of things to do here first. We need to take our button. I'm going to just kind of eyeball this. You got to get this on first. Then you can put your two screws with the collars on. Which is your flat headed one so that your arm can travel over that. Now, when I set this up initially, I had it on the free spool side of this. I'm going to try and make that happen this way. It doesn't always happen, sometimes you have to play with it. We have our 
little spring that went inside the preset adjuster. And the preset adjuster went on. And we'll see how we do. All right, and then we're gonna put our shield over the handle side. Put the handle on. Again, we're gonna thread as much of this as we can by hand. Just leave that final little bitty turn for the pliers. And I imagine if you bought this reel, you probably even got a, a tool in there. It's the first time I've had the big button. All right, and then I'm just going to, I only need to move that just to that next notch there. So I'm gonna come back in here again, kind of grabbing it very gingerly. Align it, making sure I don't score the metal or anything, but it's, hand tight now and then we can put that hold down screw in and then we'll give it the ultimate test see how we do hold it tied down we're in free spool we're free spooling that's always a good thing first strike Second strike, and that, that certainly is firm. And uh, there we go, that's much better. We had that Dawn line, as I was talking about, we had that Dawn line caught in that little case. And I didn't get it all, but there's your free spool, so that's a great cast. First strike, you're up. Cranking, second strike, hard. And I'm not feeling any of the issues that uh, Steve described earlier in terms of being difficult to crank when under load. Uh, but the ultimate test is getting it back to him and having it in the water. But I truly believe it was the, the braid slip that we showed you earlier. All right, that's the Shimano Tyronis uh, 10. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Subscriptions are what keeps my channel vibrant. If you uh, have a reel that you need to have serviced, but you're a little bit uh, hesitant or just don't feel like having uh, servicing it yourself, then contact me on the business card that follows, and I will provide you with real service information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Again, if you're a first responder, thank you for all it is that you're doing. For the rest of us, let's do our part. Wear our masks, socially distance, and uh, just be cognizant of where you are and what you're doing at all times, and that'll help prevent the spread. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.